To me, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the perfect platform game. It's a game you can pick up and play for a bit, just to chill out, or you can throw yourself headlong into the adventure for hours at a time. It's testament to how beloved this game was, that after multiple attempts to revamp Sonic the Hedgehog in the 3D world, they reverted to type and released basically a revamped version of this game in 2017 to critical success. But to me though, as I say, it's the perfect platform game. Hello, my name is Tom Campbell from Cultaholic and today I'll be talking about what Sonic the Hedgehog 2 means to me. Sonic the Hedgehog was my childhood hero outside of my dad and numerous professional wrestlers. I had multiple t-shirts and shoes. I had paintings all over my bedroom wall of Sonic the Hedgehog characters. My mum painstakingly helping me bring that particular idea to life. And I was a proud collector of Sonic the Comic that ran throughout the 90s here in the UK. I was 11 years old when I went to a friend's house and played Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the very first time on the Sega Mega Drive. I was lucky enough to own a Sega Master System and loved playing Sonic the Hedgehog on that, but I'd never seen Sonic 2 on the Sega Mega Drive and it blew my tiny mind. The graphics, the music, the fact that you had Sonic and a new character that followed him everywhere. It was amazing. Not long after that, I went into town with my mum and I managed to steal 10 minutes playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on a demo unit in Dixon's, an electronics store here in the UK, where it used to be. I seem to remember a kid at school having a copy of it before me, and he gave me the instruction manual as sort of a weird gift. I've always remembered that. I also remember the day that mum and dad picked me and my brothers up from our nan's house, and we drove to Toys R Us, and it was there, because we'd been good during the school holiday, that we got treated to a shiny new Sega Mega Drive and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sonic the Hedgehog had been in my life for a year or so before I played Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'd fallen out of love with wrestling at this point and wouldn't find it again until my late teens. But around like nine, ten years old, you've kind of started to find your place in the school hierarchy and I wasn't a cool kid. I wasn't a smart kid. I wasn't a sporty kid. I wasn't a popular kid. But I really liked to draw. I mean, in my free time, I'd quite happily sit on my own and lose myself in drawing Sonic the Hedgehog comic books of my own. That was how I spent a lot of free time as a kid. When you are that young, you need something that anchors your identity and Sonic the Hedgehog had come along at a significant time for me and when Sonic 2 came out it was a big deal when I finally owned a copy of it and I remember there was a group in my school that played it and I had a copy of it for the Sega Master System but of course any long-standing video game fan will know how different Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Master System is to Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Mega Drive so all the stuff that I was chipping in in this conversation when I had it didn't make any sense to them. It was only when I owned Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Mega Drive that I could finally join in with what I perceived to be the cool kids. I was socialising. Obviously I was socialising when I wasn't drawing. I've always loved the energy of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The moment you start the game and you get that iconic Sega, the music kicks in, there's Sonic, there's Tails appearing in that circle, you hit start to begin a new game, and there's no loading, there's no five minutes of storyline, no five minutes of world building, it's just BAM! Emerald Hill Zone, Act 1, off you go. I don't know the buttons, hey there's no time to explain, you just run right, and if you see anything that looks like a robot, jump on it. Watch jump, try any of the buttons. 
So, you smash through Act 1 of Emerald Hill Zone. You run through that goal plate, your score gets calculated, you're getting nice, satisfying ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. You might get a doodle 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 as you get uh, a continue, which is signified by a mini Sonic the Hedgehog in the bottom right corner. So, if you bottle it, you can start where you left off. Even the continue icon uh, is an example of the energy in this game. Even the continue icon, that little Sonic, is tapping his foot as if to say, come on, hurry up, let's crack on. Act two starts, no airs and graces, you're straight back into it. They totally throw you off guard here because if you're a long-term Sonic fan, you're conditioned for three acts per zone. So when I played it for the first time, got to the end of act two, didn't see the goal plate, but saw Dr. Robotnik chugging towards me in a tripped out car of destruction, threw me right off my game. I was like, oh, okay, I guess there's no act three. I guess the boss fight is now. All right, okay, what a twist. The game introduces new elements as you go, but it does it in a way where there's no stop down to explain lore, it's just integrated so you learn as you go and you get those happy feelings of endorphin release when you manage to solve a puzzle or overcome an obstacle because the game has prepped you for those moments. I also love that once you've completed the game, you have the chance to go and do it all again, but with a new gusto because it's at the end of your first playthrough that you realize, oh, there's a special ending if I collect all of these Chaos Emeralds. So this leads you to your second playthrough, which is a bit more explorative. You're very carefully collecting 50 rings, finding the star post, because once you hit 50 rings and you hit the star post, you get access to the special zone. And it's in the special zone where you can win the Chaos Emeralds. And when you win all the Chaos Emeralds, not only do you unlock that cool ending at the very, very, very end of the game, but you have the ability to turn into Super Sonic, which is a character twice as fast and invincible. So you've barreled through your first time round playing this game, and you get the chance to give it another go, and this time you stop and you slow down, and you drink it in a little bit more. And then you unlock Super Sonic, and you barrel through it twice as fast. I've lost count of the amount of times I've played Sonic the Hedgehog 2. There will be times where I will pick up and play it because I just want to kill some time. And I'll see if I can top my score of 42 seconds through Emerald Hill Zone Act 1. But there will be some times where I'll have like a whole day to myself and I'll think, you know what, I want to go back in time a little bit. And I will sit and, and very carefully play through the whole game and, and drink it in a little bit more than I used to. I've lost count of the amount of times that I've played it, but I know there'll be that times two more times that I play it throughout my life. The way Sonic 2 builds, I've always loved because they start you off with the, the greenery of the Emerald Hill Zone. You then drift into a little bit of the sort of dystopian nightmare that they're trying to build throughout the game. You get the chemical plant zone from there and uh, you go on to the casino night zone. A, a very typical style of gameplay for Sonic the Hedgehog which thrusts you into a casino. Uh, it brings you out a bit more greenery. Then we've got the oil ocean zone which is again that dystopian Dr. Robotnik style vision for the future with oil that you can drown in. Then there's Metropolis Zone, which is the biggest one because you've got three acts in that one. They even mix it up with the Sky Chase Zone where it's you on the platform of a biplane driven by Tails. And that's a very different style of gameplay because whereas you have been setting the pace throughout this game and, and rocking through levels super quick, this one is one of those keep up with the screen type levels and it does cause you to stop and reflect and the music perfectly matches that as well and and then we move on from there you push on through to uh, the wing fortress and then you get the, the almighty death egg that final boss in sonic the hedgehog 2 where all of your training comes to fruition because you've got to beat that boss with hardly any rings if any rings at all in some cases and the feeling of joy and euphoria when you topple Dr. Robotnik at the end, especially if you've gone back and got all the Chaos Emeralds so you get the special ending, can't be topped, cannot be topped. 
If I'm ever lucky enough to bring life into the world, I'd love to sit with my kids and maybe my grandkids and play Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I feel like it's a style of gameplay that will probably be lost in years to come because now everything is about big sandbox style gameplay and big stories told by big characters. This is very simple platform gaming. And I'd say to people if they wanted to try it out, just try it and let it wash over you. Who knows, it might unlock one of your new favorites. And that is what Sonic the Hedgehog 2 means to me.